Yeah, an FBI document published by Yahoo News found conspiracy theories may be motivating factors for people to commit crimes. According to the document from the agency's Phoenix field office, quote, the FBI assesses anti-government identity-based and fringe political conspiracy theories very likely motivate some domestic extremists wholly or in part to commit criminal and sometimes violent activity. The document says it's the first of its kind to examine this issue and that it will act as a baseline for other investigations. Sharon Weinberger is in our D.C. Bureau, and she's uh, the D.C. Bureau Chief for Yahoo News. She joins us now from Washington to talk more about this. Now, this is interesting because this is getting a lot of, a lot of attention, especially on social media. Why is this document so significant? Well, so the FBI has been grappling with for a while um, how to monitor, how to track, and how to stop domestic extremist or domestic terrorist attacks, particularly as the number of foreign-inspired, you know, Al-Qaeda-inspired ISIS attacks drops off rather precipitously, and we're seeing a rise in domestic extremism, like with white supremacy. So they've been putting out intelligence bulletins like this, trying to define a threat. Um, this one, which came out a few months ago, as you noted, it identifies conspiracy theories um, as a potential motivating factor for terrorist threats. Um, and so the few that it names are, for example, QAnon, mm -hmm. um, the conspiracy that there's a deep state fighting against Trump, and then the famous Pizzagate conspiracy, that there was a, um, a sex trafficking ring run out of a pizza parlor in D.C. But that pizza parlor didn't have a basement. The whole premise was that they were meeting in the basement, and then that <laughs> yeah. turned out to not even be true. Um, along those lines, then, the document does list a number of these types of examples of criminal activity that were allegedly motivated by conspiracy theories. Which of those examples stand out to you when you read the report? Well, I think that the, the two most striking ones are, of course, QAnon and Pizzagate, because they are very um, politically motivated. Uh, they tend to be associated with the far right. Now, of course, another conspiracy theory identified lower in the document was a facility called HARP, which was um, a former military facility based in Alaska, which has been linked to conspiracy theories for years. But what's so significant is they identify um, the conspiracy theories as possibly being motivated by, I think it was, quote, the un possible unconstitutional activities of U.S. leaders. Um, you know, so it doesn't name uh, President Trump except in connection with QAnon, nor does it say that the president has inspired conspiracy theories, but it does seem to allude to that, which is part of what makes the document, um, you know, so, so unusual. What's the FBI's role in monitoring these types of potential threats? Well, so the FBI does have primary responsibility for monitoring domestic threats. So unlike um, the National Counterterrorism Center, which can't monitor threats in the U.S. unless they have a foreign link, unless they're foreign-inspired or foreign-directed. So the FBI is focused on these domestic threats. I think the criticism that some of the people we spoke with had of this approach is that, you know, Conspiracy theories have been around a long time, and as one professor noted to me, you know, at one point, between 60 and 80 percent of the American public believed in some form of JFK conspiracy. They're certainly not all or perhaps any of them domestic terrorists. So the question is, like we're seeing now with the mass shootings, is what exactly is um, inspiring this violence? Is, is it a single cause? Is it multiple causes? I think it's, it's dangerous territory, or at least unsteady, to start saying, that conspiracy theories, you know, a belief system, you know, we're allowed to believe in, in the flat earth, we're allowed to believe in the JFK conspiracy, it's when we act on these. So how important is that ideological component? And I think that's what's being debated. Well, I think the other interesting thing is, it used to be years ago, you'd be at a dinner party and maybe debate conspiracy yeah. theories around JFK. Now it's all over the internet you, and you, you can find you it. You can't type JFK. No, Without not seeing at all. something. So I know you reached out to a number of government agencies for comment on this document. As we said earlier, it was out of a Phoenix field office. What did you learn from some of the agencies you contacted? That they would really rather not comment yeah. on this. And, <laughs> yeah. um, Shocking. You know, the, 
the the reporter that we worked with, Jonna Winter, we've done a series of stories with her. Um, she also was the first reporter to break the document on the so-called black identity extremist. This was another domestic terrorist threat that a lot of critics said doesn't actually exist. Um, and, you know, the FBI knows, I mean, they keep these documents for official use only. They know their potential political lightning rods. Um, so when we went to the FBI, uh, they really had no comment um, other than to say they don't comment on intelligence bulletins. Interesting. Now, this document also talks about the rise of the Internet and how it's basically affected the, the spread of conspiracy theories. I mean, j just this week we saw uh, a woman talking about QAnon. She looked like a suburban mom. It kind of went viral. And it, she didn't look like the stereotypical what we think a conspiracy theorist is look like hammering away in the basement of their parents' house. What can you tell us about how this alleged threat has changed over time? Well, look, I, I, I don't think there is a family out there in America that doesn't have that aunt or uncle who <laughs> believes in UFOs in Area 51 or that the CIA killed Kennedy or, you know, did the, did the moon landing really happen? I, I really think every family has one of those. Um, you know, one person I interviewed, Joe Sinski at University of Miami, he argues that, in fact, conspiracy theories aren't any worse than they were 20 or 30 years mm. ago. I, I think others do think that the Internet has by linking people together, it actually has increased them or at least the spread of them. Um, I'll leave it to the experts to debate that out. Um, but, you know, we certainly this is an issue that's getting a lot of media coverage and something like that video you mentioned, which is incredible going viral. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the lesson is conspiracy theories, uh, conspiracy theorists are everywhere. We all know someone or have mm -hmm. someone in our family who has crazy beliefs. The question is, when does that cross over? into violence. And that's the tricky question that law enforcement has to figure out. It's a very interesting topic. And thank you for coming to talk with us. Sharon Weinberger, thank you. Thank you.